Hi guys, welcome back to the session. In the today's session, we will learn about the error handler in Automation Anywhere A2019. So let's get started by understanding this error handler package. So this error handler package contains actions that enable you to easily handle exceptions that a bot encounters and transfer the control to other actions within the bot. So let's see what all actions we have inside the error handler package. First of all, we have this try block where we can add a sequence of actions that might encounter an error. Then we have this catch block which handles the error if it occurs under the try block. The error can be captured as a log message. We can capture the screenshot of the error. We can send the emails, etc. Also, we can provide alternative sequence of actions to run within the catch block. Next we have is the finally block which add actions that you want to run regardless if the bot encounters an error or not. So no matter error occurs or not the actions which we provide under the finally block is going to be executed every time. So the wrap up things such as closing the application, closing the excel files all comes under the finally block. And at the end we have this throw action which throws error explicitly with a custom message. So let's quickly move to automation anywhere and create a project which is going to handle the exception using this error handler package. So here I am inside the control room of automation anywhere A2019. We'll quickly create a new bot. So for that we will move to bots, my bots and click on create new bot. And let's give the name of the bot as error handler demo and let's click on create and edit. So here we are in the edit task bot page. Now I'm going to create a task to launch this Facebook application, provide email ID and password and click on this login button. And later on, I'm going to add the actions in this task to handle the error in case it occurs. So let's quickly add the actions over here. So first of all, I'm going to add the launch action that is launch website. So let's drag and drop it over here and we need to provide the URL. So this would be the URL which I want to launch. And from the drop down of the browser, let's select the browser as Internet Explorer and let's click on apply. Let's move to list view. And then I'm going to use this recorder action to record this email ID, password and the login button. So let's click on this start recording. And here it is asking for the window or URL which we wish to record. So from this drop down, I'm going to select this Facebook from the Internet Explorer. Let's select this one and let's click on start recording. So here we are in this Facebook page. I'm going to capture this email and provide the email ID over here. So you see this email text box is captured under the red rectangular box. So I'm going to provide a random email ID over here. Let's provide the email ID as test user at gmail.com. In a similar way, I'm going to capture this password text box as well. You see this has been captured under the red box. Let's provide a random password over here. Let's provide a random password and let's click on this login button. So you see this login button has also been captured. Let's click on the login button now. So we clicked on the login button and it has moved to the next page since we have provided a random password. So uh, we have been moved to this page to provide the correct password. So our recording is done. I will click on this end recording and accordingly we got three capture actions. First capture action is to capture this email text box. Next capture action is to capture the password text box and the third one is to click on this login button. Now at the end, I'm going to close this window as well. So I'm going to add this close window action. So from the window package, I'm going to select this close action. Let's drag and drop it over here and let's select this window and from the drop down, let's select this window and let's click on apply and let's save this bot. 
Now I'm going to quickly run this bot to see how it works and after that we are going to add the actions to handle the error in case it occurs. So let's click on run. I'm going to close this Facebook application. The automation anywhere is going to open it on its own. So let's click on run. And my bot is running now. It, uh, it is launching the website and now it's going to provide the email ID. So it provided the email ID. Now it's going to provide the password and clicked on login button and at the end it closed the application. So our task is successful. So let's close this one. Now I will take the example of this capture text box which captures this password based on the object properties. Now let's say that after few days these object properties gets changed or you provide incorrect object properties. So what will happen in that case? Well in that case the capture action, this capture action will throw the error and the bot execution will stop. So let me show you by changing this object property. I'm going to provide some incorrect object property. I'm going to uncheck all these properties from here. And in the DOM XPath, I'm going to provide some incorrect XPath. Let's say that I provided the modified over here. And now what all my object properties have. So it has the control type, technology type and the DOM XPath which is not a valid XPath. So let's click on apply and let's save this bot. And I will quickly run this bot to see you how it works now and how we will handle that error. So let's click on run. And my bot is running now. And the application, the Facebook application is getting launched. It will now provide the email ID. So it provided the email ID, but it won't be able to provide the password because it won't be able to get this text box because of the incorrect object properties of this text box. So you see the bot got failed. If I move over here, so you see the bot threw this error that is unable to find the text box search criteria did not match. So it was not able to find this text box. That's why it threw this error and the execution stopped. Now since the execution stopped, it didn't proceed further and it didn't close this application at the end. Now I want to handle this error in such a way that bot identifies and logs the error and proceeds to the further execution. It should not stop the execution. So let's see how we can do that. Let's close this box and I'm going to add the error handler actions from here. So this is the error handler package where we have multiple of actions present to handle the error. First of all, I'm going to add this try action where we are going to add the sequence of actions that might encounter an error. So let's drag and drop it over here and under this try block, I'm going to add all these actions. So let's cut these actions and under the try block, I'm going to paste these actions. So under this try block, the Facebook application will be launched. The email ID and password will be provided and the user will click on this login button. Now in case in any of these actions, in case any error occurs, that will be handled under this catch block. This catch block is used to handle the error if it occurs under the try block. So let's drag and drop this catch block over here. And let's see what all details we need to provide under this catch block. So here we have the exception type. So currently we have only one exception that is all errors. So let's go with this all errors option. And then we can capture the exception message as well inside a variable. So I'm going to quickly create a variable from here and let's keep the name as error message. And this is a variable of type string and let's click on create and select. Now next we can also capture the line number at which the error occurs. So for that also I'm going to create a variable. Let's keep the variable name as error line number. And this is a variable of type number. So let's click on create and select. 
Now since this error line number is a number variable, I will convert this error line number into a string variable for the logging purpose. I will show you. Let's click on apply. We have provided all the details under this catch action. Let's click on apply and under this catch action, I'm going to add to string. So under this number package, we have an action to string which converts a number to a string. So let's drag and drop it over here. So we need to provide a number over here. So press F2 and from here, let's select this error line number, which is a variable which we just created. Let's click on yes, insert and assign the output to a variable. So here we need to create a string variable. So let's click on create a variable and let's give the name as error line number. And this is a variable of type string. So let's click on create and select. So this action is going to convert the error line number to a string variable. Let's click on apply. Now in case any error occurs inside this try block, this catch block is going to capture the error with the error message and the error line number. And then we can capture the screenshot as well in case error occurs. So let me show you how we can capture a screenshot. So for that, I'm going to select the screen package. And from the screen package, I'm going to select this capture window action. Let's drag and drop it over here. Let's move it inside the catch block. And inside the capture window, let's see what all details we need to provide. So first of all, let's select the window title option as a window. And from the drop down, I'm going to select the currently active window. So at the time of the execution, the currently active window will be the window where the error will occur. So I have selected the currently active window and then I'm going to provide the file path where we need to save the screenshot. So I'm going to provide the file path over here. Let's copy this path from here and let's paste it over here. And let's give the file name as screenshot.png. We can take any of the formats which are stated over here. And in case you want to override the file, you can check this box and let's click on apply. So we have added the action to capture the screenshot in case error occurs. I'm also going to add the action log message, which is used to log any text into a file. And let's see what all details we need to provide over here. First of all, let's provide the file path. So I'm going to provide the file path of this log file. This is a text file which I have created. It is currently empty. So I'm going to provide this file path. Let's copy this one from here. And I'm going to provide it over here, log.txt. Then what log message do you want to display? So I want to display error message is and the error message is inside the variable error message, which we created under the catch action. Let's click on yes, insert. Then I'm going to display error line number is and put F2 again and let's select this error line number, which is a string variable. Now here you see we can provide only the string variables. That's why we converted the error line number, which was a number variable to this string variable. It is helpful over here. So let's click over here. Let's click on insert. And at the end, I'm going to provide the message as please find the screenshot at and I'm going to give the screenshot path. So the screenshot will be available in this folder. So I'm going to provide the path like this. 
so these all will be the text inside my log file now i also want to append the timestamp inside the log file so i have checked this box now while logging do you want to append to existing log file or do you want to override existing log file so you can check any one of them according to the requirement i will go with this append to already existing log file and at the end we can select the encoding from here so let's select this encoding and let's click on apply so i have provided all the actions inside this catch block in case any error occurs inside this try block this catch block will capture that error it will capture the error message and the error line number then it will convert that error line number into string and after that we have provided the action to capture the screenshot and log the message now you can add more actions to this catch block according to your requirement in the project you can add the send email action as well to send this log file and the screenshot over the email you can also provide alternative sequence of these actions with the correct object properties so that completely depends on the project requirement whatever you want to add inside this catch block now at the end i'm also going to add the finally block let me show you under the error handler we have this finally block which is used to run a sequence of commands after either try or catch block completes so what does it mean so no matter the bot encounters an error or not the actions under this finally block will execute every time so this is the case the action which we want to execute every time is to close that app this application no matter the error occurs or not at the end we always want to close this application so this close window application will be placed inside this finally block so let's see how we can do that so first of all let's drag and drop this finally block over here and inside this finally block i am going to drag and drop this close action so under this finally block we have added this close action so no matter the bot encounters an error or not this finally block will always execute and inside this finally block we have added this close window action so this window will be getting closed every time so all done we are done with this try catch and finally block we will see this throw action a bit later so i'm going to save this spot so when we will run the bot the execution will start from this try block all the actions within this block will be executed one by one now when in case when no error occurs inside this try block the flow will directly move to this finally block and it will close the application now in case we get any error inside the try block the flow will directly move to this catch block and it will execute all the actions inside this catch block it will capture the screenshot it will log the message and after the execution of the catch block the flow will move to the finally block at the end so no matter error occurs or not this finally block will be ex always executed at the end so let's quickly run this bot to see how it works i'm going to close this facebook application it's going to launch it by its own so let's click on run and now my bot is running it is now launching this facebook application and now it's going to provide the email id over here and it won't be able to provide the password over here because we had changed the object property and my bot executed successfully let's close this one so you see even though the bot was not able to find this password text box because we have provided the incorrect object property of the password text box even though the bot was not able to find this password text box it didn't throw the error it moved to catch block it handled the error and at the end it moved to finally block and it closed the application in the previous execution when we had not added this try catch and finally block the error was thrown and the execution was stopped and this application was not closed 
so these error handler actions are very helpful in case the error occurs in the bot i will quickly move to the project folder and i will show you the log message so this is the log message which gets generated i have added the timestamp so it provided the timestamp as well here it says uh, the error message is unable to find the text box that is search criteria didn't match so this is the expected message since we have provided the incorrect object properties of the password text box so it was not able to find the text box here it also denotes the error line number is 4 by this one we can get to know that okay my error occurred at this this line this fourth number line and at the end we have the screenshot as well in this folder so i will move to this folder and here we get the screenshot as well so this is the screenshot which we received from this screenshot we can understand that the bot was able to provide the email id in the text box but bot was not able to provide the password over here that's why it has moved to the catch block so let's move back over here also let's move to the flow view of the task to see how it looks like inside the flow view here you see this is the try block where we have added all the actions make sure that you are adding the correct actions inside the correct block so all these actions are inside that try block then we have this catch block where all the error handling actions are present and at the end we have this finally block let's move to list view again so we have learnt all these actions try catch and finally block now we also want to look into this throw action which is used if you want to explicitly throw an error with a custom message so let me show you a scenario where we can use this throw block so let's say that the in the email we have provided the email id as testuser@gmail.com so instead of that i am going to create a variable from here for the email id let's give the name as email and let's give a default value over here test user at gmail.com now whatever will be the value of the email the user will try to log into the facebook with the email variable so let's click on create and here i am going to provide the variable as email from here and let's click on apply so i have provided a default value of this email variable as test user at gmail.com now this variable value can change it could be any other email id as well it could be admin user at gmail.com it could be system user at gmail.com so what i want to do i do not want the user to log into the facebook application if the email id is test user at gmail.com so in that case i will throw an error so that the user is not able to log into the application but in such case the error won't be thrown from the automation anywhere or the facebook because this is a valid email id and if we provide the correct object properties the text box will be identified and this email id will be entered properly now if we want to stop this user to log in to this application what we need to do we need to throw the error explicitly with an error message so let me show you how we can do that so after this launch action i'm going to add one more action that is if so this is the if package from here let's select the if action and here i'm going to provide a string condition i'm going to provide a string condition as press f2 and here i am checking that if my email id if my email variable includes includes test user i do not want to match the case if my email id includes test user let's click on apply in such case i want to throw the error so from the error handler i'm going to drag and drop this throw action and here i'm going to provide an exception message so i'm going to provide the exception message as email ids with test user must not log in to the application 
so this is the exception message this is the custom exception message which we provided and from the exception drop down we will select this all errors and let's click on apply and here i am going to add a message box just for the debug purpose i'm going to add the message as inside if action email id identified as press f2 and from here let's select the email id let's click on insert inside if action email identity identified as email and again i'm going to write throwing the error so here i'm displaying a message email identity identified as the email variable so i'm throwing the error so let's click on apply let's save this one and i will quickly run this pod to see how it works now so again the execution will start from the try block the application will be launched then the flow will move to this if block then it will compare if the email variable includes this test user then the message will be displayed and this error will be thrown now as soon as this error will be thrown the flow will directly move to this catch block and the execution will be proceeded further the catch block will be executed and the finally block will be executed so let's run this pod to see how it works i will close this log file and i will close this screenshot as well let's run this one and now my bot is running it has launched the facebook application and then it says inside if block email identity identified as test user at gmail.com throwing the error so after this message box the throw action will be executed the error will be thrown and the flow will directly move to the catch block so let's close this one and here you see the throw action was there and the execution is over now let's close move to automation anywhere and let's close this one now if we check this log file now if we check this log file so this was my previous message and this is my current message so what it says this is the time stamp and here it says error message is email ids with test user must not log into the application so this message we had provided inside this throw we had provided this message inside the throw action so it got displayed over here error line number is 5 that means error line number is 5 at this action we got the error and this is the screenshot path so that was all about this error handler package guys please try to implement it in your project and let me know if in case you face any issues and that's all for this session guys hope you enjoyed this video if you did give it a like and share with your friends and hit the bell button to get the updates on the latest videos and i will see you soon in the next one bye bye